Hey friends, welcome to Christy Reacts. If you're new here, I'm Christy, and here's where we watch all the shows and movies that you recommend. And today we continue with season two of The Sopranos with episode five, Big Girls Don't Cry, and episode six, The Happy Wanderer. And I'm actually really excited about where we're at right now in the show because they're introducing us to a couple of new characters that I think will play a significant role as the show progresses. First, Richie, who is, I think, super hot-headed, merciless, kind of a psychopath. He is the brother of late Jackie, who used to run the show. And he came out of prison and kind of wanted to jump right back into where he left things off. But Tony kind of put him in his place, showing him that he is the new boss. And Furio, directly from the motherland, who shows to be dedicated, loyal, committed to his boss. And Tony really wanted that, so he brought him from Italy to work for him. And I'm excited to see how that relationship starts building and how it flourishes. They're also slowly bringing Dr. Melfi back. They showed us a little bit about her and how she's feeling kind of guilty for not seeing Tony and continuing the sessions with him. So I really do hope they, they bring her back all together. I'm not super happy with Carmela because she's encouraging Angie, Sal's wife, to stay with him even though she's really unhappy. He's terrible to her and he doesn't ask about her lump. And I think that's because Carmela is trying to avoid dealing with a larger issue, which is her own marriage. I also read in the comments that once you're in the mafia, you can never really get out. And if you're married to it, then you should probably stay in it. It's like dangerous for you to divorce someone from the mafia because you probably know a lot of stuff that you shouldn't know. Richie is pursuing Janice. Janice is Janicing. Christopher is deep into drugs, which makes me kind of sad. And Junior, I mean, he's still around, kind of. I don't know if he's still in house arrest, I don't remember, but I'm ready to jump in. I got my hydration station and my headphones, and let's do it. Session, they won't refund my money. I forgot, I gotta take care of this first. Don't you own a fucking mirror? You look like you've been French kissing the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> what the fuck, Dominic? Business slow, we tell you. We pay security, what for? Kid break window, you do nothing. Hmm. <laughs> Don't listen to her, come on, honey. Let's yeah, I mean. They say they're gonna protect him or it's security, but they don't really do anything. It's just Good. You got money for blow, but not for us, huh? Chris, please. Oh my god. I'm sorry. Oh Business my god. Business slow. Half the fucking neighborhoods out there waiting for blow job, motherfucker. Ooh. This shit's unacceptable. How you doing, hon? Oh, Charmaine doesn't really like him at all. Third time this week, Artie. I mean, they pay. She doesn't like him, but he's still paying for the food. Right? You know the guy I was talking about over there? The cheese? Yeah. It's my cousin. I thought maybe you could hire him. You know, help me out with the immigration. I'll take care of the money. How does he want to come here? He's got a job over there. You know what? Either do me the favor or not. Does he at least uh, know his ass from a shkomotz? Oh, how are you going to run that by Charmaine? Charmaine's going to say no. This is acting for writers. And your first assignment is to act like a writer who gets here on time. Oh, he's taking an acting class. My name is Chris McAvity. I work on Wall Street. McAvity. Yeah, I want to write for the movies. Goodfellas, shit like that. Hmm. So reason you chose this class? I didn't. It was a birthday present from my girlfriend. Cool. I love Adriana. Despite Corrado Soprano's recent medical furlough from jail where he was awaiting trial, sources in the U.S. Attorney's Office what? indicate that nephew Anthony Soprano probably remains the de facto boss of the North Jersey mob. But How come every person I take is a fucking news story? Let's go back to you in the studio. Sports, Wow, I didn't know that it was so, like, out there, so known. He's in the news and everything. Friend of ours is coming in. Furio. Furio? Coming in? I'm making some changes. 
Oh. Well, thanks for fucking telling me. When was this decided? Box of Malamos on the counter. Fucking empty. You think I don't know it was you? What? I'm kidding you, you fuck. <laughs> 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 You're getting a bump. <gasps> it's me and you and Sil together. That's the new pecking order. What about Puss? Pussy reports to you guys directly. Nice. Same nice. Oh, Polly deserves it, honestly. Where are you in the dream? I'm there. I could observe everything. He's driving and he starts to hyperventilate. He yeah. grabs for a bottle of Prozac. He goes into a full blown panic attack and he passes out. <laughs> For a second, when they were showing this, I thought it was actually happening. Thank God it wasn't. Who in Wizard would your patient be? Given the fact that he's a powerful, dominating male, Oz himself? What, Elliot, with the eyebrows already? <laughs> the Wizard of Oz, what memories does it conjure up? Hiding under the blanket with my sister. Why are you hiding? I'm gaining weight. <laughs> I love that touch. Why do we love roller coasters, Jennifer? Scary movies? To experience the thrill of being terrified without the consequences. I'm concerned that treating a mobster provides you some vicarious thrill. I had to go into hiding, remember? And wasn't that thrilling? Fuck you. It wasn't. You smug cocksucker. <gasps> Fuck you. Oh. Does everyone treat their therapist like that? I don't think so. <laughs> hey, you may be the boss out there, but she the boss in here. Yeah, I'll give it a fucking message. What? She's trying to take out a loan on my mother's house. Parvani? Janice. Her name is fucking Janice, okay? <laughs> it's not enough that she's living rent free. She's got to try to squeeze money out of the fucking house, too. Fucking goddamn fucking bitch! Oh, damn it, Tony! Yeah, Tony, control yourself around your kids. Kid and wife. What did I say, AJ? Go get dressed. Poor AJ. I forgot to tell you, I got a job at Radio Shack. Product testing. Giving that phone enough for durability. <laughs> Just apologize like a normal father. Okay, he's ready to go off on Janice. Guys, it's me. Open the door. <gasps> what the fuck are you doing here? Where's my sister? Store. You want some eggs? Why don't you put your fucking pants on? Yeah, what the heck? Show some respect. So what the fuck, Rich? Mattress at the shelter a little too lumpy? <laughs> We're adults, Tony. And we got history together. Yeah. Israel and fucking Palestine. People change. There are men in the camp better looking at my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Cross the line on me once, Anthony, and I hold my tongue. She may be your sister, but back the fuck off. <gasps> All due respect. Well, that's not respectful. What the fuck do you know about respect? Seriously. I put you back in business, you cocksucker. Did you go see Beansy? Why don't you make him some fucking eggs? Hello? That's right. I like when he goes off on Richie, because Richie's terrible. I applied for the loan simply because I'm trying to make this place habitable for mom. Oh, don't worry about it. I give you the money. Stay as long as you like, Rich. She's your fucking problem now. That's right, Tony. I think, you know, you don't like your sister, so let Rich have her. You don't want the house, so let Janice have it. Just... Says here you're required to wear them for driving. Now, into this mix comes Omar with a bag of oranges. Your wife's getting a ticket. Maybe I can change your mind. You're dropping your fucking oranges. <laughs> I love improv. I actually took two years of improv when I lived in LA. Chris, 
Mitch and Cynthia. Scene six and seven, The Glass Menagerie. I love that he's invested in this. He's like interested in doing it. it distracts him a little bit from like drug world that he was really in there for a while. Oh, they're having a party. Who's this up anyway? He's a friend of ours. Talk later. You having a good time? <laughs> Food's good, right? You know, it's a spectacle. But the AMC. <laughs> is on. We don't even show this in Italy. <laughs> Nobody care. His shirt's wild. Oh, it's a vest. Christopher, how you doing, man? <laughs> what the hell are you doing here? I can't. Tony, make a party for me. Oh, it's a welcome party for Furio. Did you talk to that guy down at the uh, tanning salon? He only had half. Again? Leave it alone. You sure? Yeah. Are you gonna send Furio? Carmela. Oh. What do you want? A relative from the other side is here. I should pay my respect. Oh! <gasps> yes! Yes, Carmela. A little physical defect is what you have. Oh. Little physical defect? Let's just get a different scene. I like you as an actor. I know, me too. Hey, Tony. Hesh's <sighs> home <sighs> is gorgeous. Can I talk to you about something? Not on any fucking scale you want to use. Things are going good. So why the fuck am I ripping phones out of the wall in front of my kid? <sighs> And screaming at my sister all the fucking time, although she is totally unimportant to me. You're a lot on your mind. What if I told you I went to see a shrink? I had an inkling. I don't know if he's the right guy to talk about it. I don't know if he'll like... It's like I'm in my kitchen. All of a sudden, I can't breathe, right? It's like I'm <sighs> suffocating. I get to the point where I fucking pass out. Damn. Just like your father. Oh. Buddies. That's the same thing. My old man had anxiety attacks? Well, in those days, we called it a condition. Holy shit. Wow. He, he cracked his head open once on a cigarette machine. I had this fucking weird dream the other night. I was at the beach, but I had a suit on. And a shoes, too. Shove a camera up your ass the size of a garden hose. You want to hear this fucking dream or not? No, he doesn't. I'd rather do something else. I already spoke to what's his name? Mitch, Cynthia, too. They're cool with changing. Rebel without a cause. Cool. I don't want a James Dean impression. Yeah. No. Don't give them that shit. They like it. They eat bread and corn and shit like that. <laughs> so you know everything. Family of Mallards lived in my pool for two fucking months. Remember? What <gasps> What he said. He said, if I don't like to fight, I should find myself a Russian. Oh my god. Tony, no! Tony, what are you gonna do? You should be out. She's a nice girl. Yeah, what are you, a family counselor? You wanna get involved in people's problems? Here. <gasps> do something. You wanna be involved? Now you're involved. Oh, you let go! Oh my god. Tony. <laughs> With the arm floats. Get your shit, we're going. Come on. Ugh. Tony, you ruined your own day. You could have had a beautiful day in the ocean and you had to go grab someone's testicles. Help me, daddy. Daddy. You can depend on me. <laughs> oh, fuck this shit. You said you weren't going to laugh. Oh. Baby, you were doing so good. Nah, fuck this. Oh. Christopher. Christopher. I already changed it once. I gave you the scene because it's challenging. You can do it, Christopher. You're a great actor. Friggin' look at it and get a hold in. I would've played great with Uncle Junior and everybody else after my <sighs> ass. Hesh is not your therapist, brah. Well, my kids. It happens, okay? <sighs> the fuck is wrong with me? You got some kind of complex what kind you know sleep always helps <laughs> well, lately i feel this aversion to my swimming pool what i actually find myself avoiding the backyard you're the nazi wow you kind of rubbed me the wrong way 
And then one time I was pulling into a pocket glass. <laughs> Hesh is not interested in your problems, Tony. Chris, Mitch, Cynthia, and Alan, our rebels without causes. Does Chris not go? Oh, he's there. Okay, cool. Shut the lights! Make them go away! Plato! Keep away from me! I don't believe you anymore! Gunshot! Jim! Oh, Dad, help me. Daddy. You, you, you can depend on me. It's okay, Jim. Stand up. Mitch is a sh bad actor. I'll stand up with you. Chris. He was always cold. Chris is really good. Dad, this is Judy. She's my friend. Same. <sighs> un freaking believable. The guy who played dead was like, that's it? How'd you make yourself cry like that? <laughs> oh. Oh. Furio making mozzarella. Is he even good at it? Hey, chef of the future. Have a seat. How you doing, Furio? <laughs> Furio. Look at this crew. Johnny Sachs? I heard a lot about you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, me too. My pleasure. He's shaking everyone's hands with his mozzarella hands. Of course. Want to give us a minute? Yes. I'm in the middle of fucking eating. I know. What a shift in power right here. I got to make a call anyway. He has to get used to it. He has to adjust to it because he'll run. I mean, Silvio, I get, but fucking Paulie, he's probably dizzy from all that hairspray in the sun. <laughs> Most of the guys in this life. There's no fucking honor. Forget your enemies, you can't even depend on your friends. Half of them are on drugs, the other half are fucking psychos. Yeah. World full of scumbags. I wouldn't call them that, but yeah. I'm thinking about taking my patient back. <gasps> it's a serious decision. It's a great decision. I'm with it. I'm feeling so... Why are you giving him so much power over you, Melfi? Get a grip. Fuck, I don't know where this is coming from. Is she having feelings for him? I think seeing him again will be very therapeutic for me. It's not supposed to be therapeutic for you. This is your therapy here. Mm -hmm. Do you have sexual feelings for him? Well, do you? No. I have feelings. He can be such a little boy sometimes. But that's it, the one with the palm tree. It's not just the Dominic who is the problem. He's the wife, too. I like Furio. He's good with people, he's good with kids, he's good meeting people, and he goes and gets his hands really dirty. Good man. Great character, at least. Maybe not a good man, but a great character for this show. May I help you? <gasps> what are you doing? <laughs> Oof, out of here. Bra, bra, bra. Wow, he is a hurricane. I don't quiero ver eso. Damn you! I know. Tony's like proud of him. Oh my god. Remember when I said he was a good man? <laughs> yes, so. Oh, I wow. uh, tried your other number. I could uh, fit you in tomorrow at 2 30. Now, nah, fuck it. Why do you say that? Can't buy without it. I'll keep the hour open. Yeah. I feel, I think Tony feels abandoned by her when he really needed her and she was like, get out of my life. So now he, I don't know, he doesn't, 
I don't know. This I feel things. You just saw two actors have an entire conversation saying only A, and the other responding B. Mitch, Christopher, you want to give it a try? Hey, come on, Chris. A. <gasps> Stop it! What? What are you doing? Why? Do you think it's because he was playing? Mitch was playing? Chris's dad or like in the scene of Rebel Without a Cause and Chris has feelings but his dad maybe doing that scene brought up some bad feelings what scene you know where he was supposed to be your father maybe he really reminded you of your father and that's why you got so into it Adriana. and maybe that's why you hit him tonight how do you know what it's all about huh from writing down orders at the fucking restaurant? <gasps> Your whole thing with, with script writing, who else is behind you? Who even knows about it? When I saw the ad in the paper acting for writers, I couldn't wait to get it for you for your birthday. Oh. I'm sorry. Chris, you asshole. She's happy to see him. Find out a little medical history. My old man had the same thing. Panic attacks. Followed by Pierre Serrano. Want to direct my power and my fucking anger against the people in my life that deserve it. You want to be a better gang leader? Read The Art of War by Sun Tzu. You know what? Fuck you. <gasps> Again. You know who I am. And you know what I do. You called me. You know where I was yesterday when you called? I was outside a whorehouse. Well, the guy that works for me was inside beating the shit out of a guy that owes me money. Broke his arm. She's visibly uncomfortable. Put a in his kneecap. And he's proud of it. How'd that make you feel? Wish there was me in there. Giving the beating or taking it? Please don't do drugs. Oh. Why? You're finally pursuing something you like doing, and you're actually doing good at it. That was a good episode. These crunch so much, I have to eat them before the show starts. Yuka Balls. This is not a sponsor. I just really like them. So again, get all of your academic and extracurricular ducks in a row. Leave nothing to chance. Davy, saw your wife out there alone. I figured you for the trotters. Not tonight. So who do you like? Oh no, that guy from Bowden seems to be making some sense, I guess. No, I'm in a game tonight. She knows one of your shrew Dell in the right mouth, and her daughter can go anywhere she wants to go. So far the Janet is the only one going near them. I'm so glad that I have subtitles here. All the stuff they talk about. Shoy Adele. How you doing, Eric? Pretty good, Mrs. Brano. All right. I hear you're thinking of what? Going to Brown, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a good school. Mr. Kimoko will go wherever his mother tells him. No different than his old man. You too? You know, in high school, these guys were like Joe Namath and Y.A. Tittle. And now they're like uh, Phil Donahue and Alan Alda. <laughs> I don't get I don't. I didn't get that joke. I heard through the grapevine that you're taking over your uncle's game. You know, the big one. What kind of game? Well, trust me, this game's not for you. I don't want to see you get hurt. These guys, they play deep. I'm thinking I'd like to take a brick and smash your fucking face in a <gasps> fucking hamburger. Okay. When you asked, I told. And why but do you'd you... like to smash my face? But why? Not really. It's just a way of describing how I'm feeling. Maybe he's just from this power trip from being boss. I see some guy walking down the street, you know, with a, with a clear head. Like the happy fucking wanderer. And I just want to go up to him and I just want to rip his throat open. I want to fucking grab him and pummel him right there for no reason. Wow. Why should I give a shit if a guy's got a clear head? I should say, also, look, good for you. Sometimes I resent you making me a victim. That's all. I make you feel like a victim. Well, um... 
And I, all Americans, all they're doing is crying and confessing and complaining. A bunch of fucking pussies. Fuck them. And now I'm one of them. Angry Tony. No, no, that's it. I gotta go. Now, come on, Artie, another hour. I can't. Charmaine will have my balls on the menu tomorrow. <laughs> Rich, can I get another time? I got three players left. So what? Vito's up for it, right? Fuck do I gotta be? You into me for seven G's already. Is that all? I'll make that back from Vito in an hour. Wow. He is a bit of a gambler, this dude. A player. Have our work cut out for us. Oh. <laughs> it's just when you try out for cabaret night, the form asks what you want to do, and I checked off solo. I'd like to give everybody a shot. So you okay with this? Do I have a choice? Yeah, you got a choice. You can continue to run the game. You know I'm under fucking house arrest, you <laughs> cute fuck. <laughs> you know, your father and me started that game over 30 years ago. Ah, that's the game he's talking about. The big game. It's a certain kind of player. That's why we call it the executive game. They don't make them like Johnny. And keep in mind that he paid the freight for your Uncle Eckley or Bonan. That was a major fucking nut. Oh? Who the fuck is Eckle? Eckley. Eckley. Let's talk about something else. No, you open this clam, my friend. Who is he? He was my younger brother. Oh. He was between me and your father in age. His name was Eckley. I got another uncle? Sharp as a fucking cue ball. Yeah, I'm saying. It was different in those days. Mother and father didn't even speak the language. They couldn't take care of a kid like that. Like what? He was slow. He was strong as a fucking bull. Handsome. It was today they might have trained him to be a whatever or something. Get him a job. <laughs> oh, wow. Interesting. She kept talking about my father's feeble-minded brother, but I always thought she meant you. <laughs> Let's talk about this game. What's my end? I don't know. Ten percent. Twenty. Fifteen. Call your friends. Let them know the game's happening. How does he feel about his uncle having issues? Like the pimp says to his hoes. Keep them coming. That envelope's too sea shy. I'll catch up on it next week. It's no problem. I just got caught a little off guard this month. You know, I took a second on the house. The difference gets tacked on to the principal. I don't want to see your face at any of my games until you're caught up. Maybe you should stop playing altogether. It's just a stutter step. At least he's not beating you up, bruv. You don't know what Richie is all about. Yeah, give me some of that. Enough for 15 people, 10 pounds of shrimp. Nice. <gasps> These motherfuckers can play for two days straight sometimes. Now, once you start work, you don't go till the game breaks up and that fucking place looks like an operating room. Something ain't right. Fucking A, I just saw you putting your finger on the scale. No, I didn't. You pulled that shit with the old ladies, not with me, you fucking ho- <laughs> Whatever you do, don't engage Silvio in conversation. He could be a sick fuck when he's gambling. Oh. Put that shit in the trunk so it don't stink up the car. Pay for the fish. This guy for real or what? We're fucking piss poison? Come on, let's get the fuck out of here. That's how you start. You have to start from the bottom, bruv. We want the room with the stove and the refrigerator. And the two rooms on the sides. We may be here for some days. You people are ruining this place. That's your father's fault. He made it a business deal. Shlomo. You ever uh, suck his dick? <laughs> I make that beanie spin when I work his thing. <laughs> Am I right? Beanie. Well, they, 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 they did business with the Sopranos. You pay forever. Uh oh. How about if I give you one of these instead? I'm wearing a vest. Oh, yeah? If I shoot, it's going in your brajo. You're a real sick fuck, you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Daddy boy. Oh. They don't fuck with the tourists and the hotel guests. Keep the noise down and no gunshots. So we got to take the call. Yeah, yeah. Change coming. I love that this is an executive so game like and they buy a lot of food and they have the cops like let them do their thing. 
but they run it in like this really run down motel room. Maybe it's not run down, but it looks kind of icky. Mac and Udo's, you want one? Go ahead, take a walk. Don't let him scare you. He's not really a nasty fuck. He's an incredibly nasty fuck. Hey, <laughs> chair boy of the board. He trades out one between two right. players. Okay, put some fun. of this shit out of him. Don't give anybody it's booze unless they ask for it. Out. All right? Okay. Yeah, I heard Tony was here. Soprano. I'm a friend of him. Why is he just showing up? Tony said you're not up for this game. Some place you got here. Yeah. Regular Taj Mahal. Was that Frank Sinatra Jr. in there? Yeah. It's a friend of my uncle. Oh. He flies in. <gasps> wow. Was that really it? Him? Come on, Anthony. Let me sit in just once. I don't do business with outside friends. You understand. Right? You need 5G just to sit in this game. Oh, come on. Can't you float me? You know, short term. Davey, don't say short if you don't mean short. Ah, I don't like this. He tried to tell you a million times that you don't belong here. So... Say hello to Davis Catino. How you doing? How you doing? Okay, fellas, make room. New blood coming in. It's a duck with a special piece. Oh, lads. I wanted them to ask. Really? <laughs> Pino implants. Hey, duck. Wow. Please. I've heard all the jokes. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so get a broom and sweep up Jack some of that shit over there, especially on the Sylvia Orman. What the fuck are you doing? Silk. Take it easy. I'm losing my balls over here. This fucking moron's playing Hazel. Leave the fucking cheese there, all right? I love fucking cheese at my feet. I stick <sighs> motherfucking provolone in my socks at night so they smell like your sister's crotch in the morning. <sighs> Damn. OT. Does Tony have to stay there and like supervise the whole thing the whole time? It's almost nine. Oh, wow. How we doing? How we doing? Do you want to admit that you lost and pack it in? Me? No. He lost. I thought he was doing okay. Like How much is he into us for? About 45 bucks as a CD. King of hearts. Ace what? Of hearts. He grabbed another 10 while you were asleep. He said you okay. 45 grand? That's a lot of money for a game. Look at this fucking lineup. How'd you get in here? Same as you, to the front door. You want some locks? I got some nice fresh locks. Yeah, I love locks. I just stab you in the fucking eye. <gasps> hey, come on, Richard. Get your hand off for me. I'll put one in your head. <laughs> Let me fucking embarrass you. I'm sorry now. I want to talk. That's right. He's loose. He's a loose cannon. Matt, thanks a lot. Here's one for your pal. Cash me out, will you, Sunshine? Thank you, Mr. Sinatra. Junior, sir. <laughs> no, Tony, I'm getting sick of this holier-than-thou act, and I'm not the only one. Oh, really? Well, if anybody wants to make a move, let them pay me my money. Send them out. You go home, Richie. This ain't gonna happen to one of my players. I think we need to get rid of Richie. I think we need to... He, he needs to get out of here. He's disrespectful. Volatile. I don't like him. I'm gonna let you sleep one day. Then you're gonna get the fuck up and you're gonna go get my forty-five thousand dollars. Yeah, no problem. He told you a million times. If after one day you don't give me every penny, I'm gonna send somebody down to your joint every Saturday for five percent interest. If you don't have it, it gets tacked onto the principal. Tony, did I do something to insult you? Two days. <laughs> Sylvia eating the whole time. How we do? Not finished counting, but it's up there. At least 80 boxes of ZDs after expense. Nice. Salud. 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 Wow, it's late. Trying to get some sleep. I've been working all night. How you doing, Eric? Pretty good. Sounds good. Thanks. <laughs> oh, Aunt Barb called. Uncle Tom's father died. Oh, what the hell happened? I don't know. <laughs> the guy's here almost every Christmas Eve. You don't ask? She's a teenager, Tony. 
discuss the wind comes, knocks them off the roof. <gasps> Go for a satellite dish. That's very sad. Wow. It's an unfortunate accident. 65. Guy works his whole life, takes care of his family, does the right thing. One day Young. after he retires. One day. Wow. <laughs> He's joined the ranks of the unlucky. Maybe you know what you're talking about, but I don't. Found out I had another uncle. A retarded uncle. <gasps> my father's brother. That nobody told me about. Now that you found out that you have a retarded family member, do you feel better about coming here? Is it enough of a sad tragedy that you can join the rest of the douchebags? Those are great questions, actually. This may come as a surprise to you, but these people are not here to see the Sopranos kill each other. Now show some respect for Tom's father, will you please? Hey, Tom. I, I don't think you can smoke in here. Who's gonna complain? Huh? Him? Hey. You mind? <laughs> what am I supposed to do with you? What? Back off and respect the title, you fucking jerk off. That's true. It's your ball. You make the rules. Oh. They've always been there. Now you get this. David Scatino doesn't pay you a fucking penny until I got mine first. Oh. Oh. That's the tax you get for raising your hands in my game. It's about time you actually made him pay for being old school. Hot-headed dick. I'm just saying, I don't think you should take any shit from him. I heard you the first time. Let's drop the subject. All right. Janice, don't fuel him. My father was in Tony's position. He gave Romeo Martin $50,000 when he got out of jail. Now we're talking about 30 years ago. 30 years ago. Girl, Janice, you suck. What an instigator. So what's this fucking doctor's appointment you had all of a sudden when my friend comes to see you, huh? I'm gonna make it all work out somehow, I swear. What do you got for me? Dad, I'm sorry, Tony. I wouldn't do anything to insult you. Our kids go to the same school together. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tony. Same dumb face that when you were asking to play the game and Tony was telling you no. It's too, too much for you. Please, Tony. My luck's gonna change. No, it's not. Come on, Reggie. I want something tomorrow. You wanna stand me? You, you alright? Poor Artie. He keeps getting reeled back into this. He's like, I just wanna have my restaurant. Leave me alone. I need money. Money, Artie. Not much. Just, just enough to give me some breathing room until I can get the rest together. It's 20000 gonna believe this i gotta put a new roof on this place god forgive me for saying this but did you consider chapter 11 i don't think tony soprano's gonna buy that what what's chapter 11 are you gonna sell your son's car <laughs> say goodbye to your truck <gasps> No off-roading. I gave you enough chances. Dave, this is not the place. Dad, I didn't do anything. I fucking ate all of you. You apologize right now. No, I'm not going to apologize to that nut job. I knew it was a car. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sports utility vehicle. Wow, but aren't you guys friends? This is Eric's Jeep. Oh, my God. His dad sold it to you? Yeah, you know, something like that. I also wouldn't take it. I also wouldn't take it. That's ridiculous. He didn't do anything to you. The guy owed me money, and he did the right thing, and he offered that car up as partial payment. Yeah, right. I'm going to take that car, I'm going to sell it to pussy, and then I'm going to buy clothes and food and shoes and CD players and all the rest of the shit that I've been buying since the day you were born. So take that high moral ground and go sleep in a fucking bus station if you want. Wow. How did you expect her to react? Thank you for taking my friend's car and give it to me. Carmel, I think you should talk to her and assure her that Tony is wrong. He's acting crazy towards uh, Meadow. And involving her in the business. He owed me money twice. She doesn't need to know that. Also, I hate when parents are like, I work so hard to give you everything. Like, you chose to have me, bro. Where? A few rows back. Let 
Let's talk. You're just gonna leave me here? I thought you were my friend. I am. I can't stop my dad from selling it. Yo, your dad's a fucking asshole. Fuck you. Fuck your gangster father. And fuck this. <sighs> I would do the same. Regretfully, Mr. Scatino will not be performing tonight. Instead, Ms. Soprano will perform a solo, singing My Heart Will Go On, the theme song from <gasps> She Titanic. wanted a solo. Enjoy the show. That is a lucky break. I mean, not lucky. I mean, but she's lucky because she got the chance to do it. Okay. 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 A lot to talk about there. Let's do it. Okay, a couple of things that I really liked about this episode. First of all, I really like Furio. I think he is like a nice, looks like a level-headed guy that gets along with people. But when he goes into work mode, like action mode, he goes wild. Ruthless, merciless, Italian mafia wild. Also, after Dr. Melfi had been feeling guilty about dropping Tony as a patient, he ends up returning to Dr. Melfi for therapy sessions, which I feel like he really needed, although he is very resistant to the therapy. He was trying to open up to Hesh and tell him about his problems and the way he's feeling about his backyard and his dreams, and Hesh was so uninterested. He was just talking about himself, things that happened, and da-da-da. He was just so uninterested. But he did tell Tony that his father, Johnny, Tony's dad, he used to also have panic attacks. So now Tony thinks is, I don't know, hereditary. And also we find out through Junior that they had that Tony had another uncle that had a mental disability. I like that they're starting to exclude Sal from things, not only because he's a snitch, but Tony promoted both Silvio and Polly, which I was so happy about, and now Sal and Furio report to them. So that's gonna be like an interesting dynamic that I can't wait to see unfold. Also, Richie is out of control, y'all. I know he's volatile and old school and whatever, but he, caused a scene at the executive game and Tony had to really put him in his place and it was about time for Tony to do that like I was I was Tony was too patient with him up until now and Janice is doing with him what Livia did with Junior instigating him and pinning him against Tony and this other guy Davey I think he's an idiot Tony warned him a million times that this game is not for him is too out of his league and he's insisted in playing and now he owes them a lot of money and Artie is refusing to get involved he doesn't he's like oh soprano like I don't want to lend you money of course he said he had to change the roof but yeah I'm glad that that Artie is staying out of it it's a huge issue that Tony is exploding like that in front of his kids like, he's becoming angrier and angrier the more the season advances. The more the show advances, he's just becoming angrier and angrier. I wonder if we will continue to see Davey or if it's just one of those characters that falls off the show. And Chris, I love that Chris is exploring or was exploring that actor side. Like, he's kind of artsy. He used to write and now is exploring acting and he did really, really good until I think the actor feelings got a bit too real for him and of course exploded and beat up a random guy the show is heating up which i'm super super excited about and thank you all for watching with me if you liked this video don't forget to give it a like and leave a comment and if you haven't yet please don't forget to subscribe and go follow me on instagram at chrissy reacts and i will see you guys next time bye